There we go. So it's uh, 10 o'clock. I think we're, uh, as this is our first time on Zoom, what we'll do is we'll give people a few extra minutes to log on. We'll probably begin in about uh, maybe two or three minutes. So, but thank you all for, were, were the links easy to follow? Yes. Yeah. Great. No. Uh, Matt, I got a couple questions. Yes. Uh, should we leave our mutes on or off? Uh, yes, yeah, so I think when we when we begin, I'll ask everybody uh, to mute. And I think uh, Christy, who's serving as the co-host, we have the ability, I think, to override turning systems off. So like we can't turn your camera on without your permission, uh, but I think we can mute. So um, yeah, so we, we can mute parishioners and then have, and then, um, ask them to unmute. So uh, that's the first thing we'll do when we start worship is to just invite everybody who's not speaking to mute. The other thing that also does is it helps us uh, with feedback because sometimes uh, if you're not muted, the audio you're hearing gets uh, reproduced and we get a little bit of a feedback effect. So. Looks like the boss there. Uh, the other thing, just to kind of uh, get a few announcements out of the way, uh, if you have a question, uh, you can use the chat bar at the bottom. Uh, I think the, the easiest thing to do is, uh, Christy will kind of be my helper uh, as the co-host uh, to help answer questions. Um, but if you have any questions, you can, you can put them in the chat as well, so. I think we'll wait one more minute and then we'll will begin worship. I'll see that there. Good morning. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Question we don't often have to ask when we're doing in-person worship. <laughs> uh, thank you all for joining us both uh, live here in the Zoom and also on Facebook. Uh, and to those of us joining in a, uh, a little bit time delayed on YouTube, uh, welcome to you as well. Uh, thank you all for your patience. I think that's the first thing that needs to be said this morning. Uh, we made an announcement on Thursday and then reversed that decision uh, the following day about in-person worship. Uh, I think that discretion is the better part of valor and that our duty to our neighbor is best exemplified by uh, not doing what we want, but with what's doing what's best for the community and giving the rising infection rates, uh, not just in Plumas County in general, but in Quincy and American Valley in particular. Uh, I think the wise thing to do is to uh, go back to uh, digital worship. Uh, so my thanks to all of you for navigating the technology. My thanks to all of you for your patience with me uh, as we try to, our, as we try our best to deliver the closest approximation we can uh, to in-person worship. 
just a, a few announcements. Uh, next Sunday, the 22nd, is the Feast Day of Christ the King. It's uh, Christ the King Sunday. Uh, it's also the last day of the liturgical year, so it marks uh, the end of our uh, cycle through uh, the church calendar year. Uh, it's also a day in which we celebrate by, so the, the full name of the Sunday is the Advent of Christ the King. Makes a just a few uh, announcements. At, so Christy, if you could mute people. Sorry, I'm just hearing myself. If I can invite everybody to mute themselves at this time. There we go. Thank you. Uh, the full the full name of next Sunday is the Advent of Christ the King, uh, and it makes a wonderful turning point as we turn towards Advent and the, uh, our preparations for the Christmas season. Uh, so what I tried to do was to make this as easy as possible. So on the 22nd at two o'clock, so think all twos, at the 22nd at two o'clock, we're gonna be having a uh, small work day here at the church. Uh, there'll be uh, some light cleaning outside, basically getting rid of all the cobwebs and spider webs. Uh, and inside, we'll be uh, preparing the sanctuary for Advent and Christmas. So we'll be hanging the garland. Uh, we'll be uh, putting up the trees. I've got new tree stands, so the trees should take all of 30 seconds to put up. And then the only time it'll take will be to uh, put the lights on. So uh, we're looking for about 10 people to be split inside and outside to uh, help us prepare for the Advent and Christmas season. Uh, there'll be a sign-up genius that'll be emailed out uh, tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, we will be doing the uh, temperature screenings. Uh, we will be asking if you've been exposed to COVID-19, so we'll still be uh, doing our best to make sure that we're not exposing one another uh, during this uh, pandemic. Uh, but we'll also, if you're inside, we'll also ask you to be wearing masks. Uh, outside, we just want to maintain either social distance or also wear a mask as well. Uh, also, uh, thank you to those of you who have filled out the holiday survey. Uh, we'll have a, another survey uh, sent out, I think once we have a closer idea of what tier we're going to be in at the beginning of December. Uh, but thank you. If you haven't already done that, uh, I'll include that in tomorrow's email as well. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you all for joining us once again. Uh, our opening hymn this morning, which will be, uh, the music will be provided through Christie's computer. Uh, our opening hymn is hymn 680, O God, Our Help in Ages Past.
Blessed be Father, Father, or blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And at this time, uh, we invite Joe Wade, who will be uh, doing the readings for us. Reading from the fourth book of Judges, the fourth chapter of the book of Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Eden died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who laid them. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Adrasel Akroya. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly for 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidot, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah to King Zorbar, Bethel, and the four princes of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Gedeb in Nahal, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take this virgin, Petra, Nabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the one who shone with his chariot and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I saw the Lord for his dream. To you, I lift up my eyes to be up in throne in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, and the eyes of maids to the hand of the mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he shows us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough. Too much of the scorn of the intellect and of the derision of the crowd. The New Testament reading was from 1 Thessalonians to chapter 5. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come. When they say there is peace and security, sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a sick woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, and that day to strike you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night. So then, let us not follow suit as others do, but let us keep awake 
In light of our upcoming Thanksgiving holiday, our uh, sequence in this morning is Come Ye Faithful People, Come. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be as when a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. 
After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge over many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And then the one with two talents also came forward saying, Master, you have handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. And so I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Great things thou hast done, O Lord my God. I would name them and proclaim them, but they are more than I can tell. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, when I was a sophomore in high school, uh, we read the book of Genesis in English class. Uh, Mr. Hurd, my teacher at the time, did a good job in providing all the appropriate disclaimers. Uh, the point of reading the Bible in high school English at a public school uh, wasn't to evangelize students. That would violate the separation of church and state. No, the point was to read Genesis as a story, learning about the use of irony and imagery, uh, but also how these stories employ techniques like foreshadowing, just like any other author might do. But I think the real reason why we read uh, a few books from the Holy Bible was because the Bible is a source of untold cultural and literary references. And if you can't understand the wealth of references that point back to Scripture, you're not going to comprehend the entire meaning of thousands of pieces of work, of poetry and prose ever written ever since. And as a class, we got a full four chapters into Genesis before everything went completely off the rails. As we read the story of mankind's first murder, several students noticed the irony that Cain killed his brother Abel. And it was ironic because that to them, the name Abel might indicate that he was able-bodied, while Cain might intone weakness and frailty. And this apparently is where my impatience with idiocy was born. I tried valiantly, and I really did, I actually threatened to walk out of the class, to explain that the Hebrew scripture and the Hebrew language itself predated the English language by some 2,500 years. It was a mere linguistic coincidence that the names Cain and Abel actually had any meaning uh, in the English language when they already had meaning in the Hebrew language. I tried to ask them, what would it mean to read this story in Chinese, where the names Cain and Abel wouldn't be a homonym for our own language? But my classmates and even my teacher insisted 
perhaps there was intended meaning. And we face a similar temptation against an English homonym in our guide to understanding what Jesus intended to teach his followers with our parable lesson this morning. The English that we read from today renders the Greek word talenton as talent. Now, a talenton is a large sum of money, and it's typically an ingot of precious metal. So you might think of it uh, as a small nugget of gold or silver. Um, and in terms of value, it was roughly worth uh, half of a lifetime of earnings uh, for someone in the ancient Near East. So a single talenton is a small fortune. But five talents, five talents, was an extraordinary amount of wealth. Uh, so think about this master giving out eight talents. That's the lifetime, of, that's four lifetimes of wages for a slave to earn. It's an extraordinary amount of wealth. But by translating this sum of wealth into the word talent, it's hard to avoid the conclusion that Jesus was speaking about attributes. Like the names of Cain and Abel, we find meaning in scripture, and sometimes that meaning has meaning. The power of scripture is that God designed it to seep deep within the core of our consciousness, and I, not being God, cannot say one way or the other exactly how we should read this. But I do think it is worth noting that we can explore both. So for a moment, let us consider the parable of the slaves and the talents as a hominem. And I think the mystery of scripture will show us some good news here. A master entrusts three slaves, each with massive amounts of wealth for them to manage. Understanding this parable as a metaphor for God and for God's people, we have what John Rawls might describe as the natural lottery. Not all of us are great public speakers. Some of us are comfortable speaking in crowds. Others of us would rather face death. Some of us are gifted visionaries and can chart a course through stormy waters across the sea. Others of us can't find our way out of a paper bag. These gifts, these talents, if we were to render the word in that way, are as varied as each one of us as people. Some are blessed with a host of gifts and talents. Some are given five talents. Others struggle to find any strengths. Some are given maybe perhaps just a single skill or talent. And the first two slaves, they use their talents to do an extraordinary thing. They find a way to double the capital. We are never told exactly just how they were able to invest so shrewdly, but their master rightly congratulates them. Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. But what does this third slave do? Matthew says, then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. And I think the Gospel of Matthew in particular judges harshly, perhaps the most harshly, against bearing the, the light and the talents that God gives us. In the Sermon on the Mount, right after the Beatitudes, Jesus tells his followers this, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts, its, puts it under a bushel basket, 
put on the lampstand and it gives its light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. In Matthew's understanding, we are meant to let our light shine always. Burying our light, or excuse me, hiding our light, burying our talents is a rejection of what God designed and intended us for. And the judgment is harsh. As his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, understanding the parables as a discussion of attributes, of skills and talents that we were all imbued with by God, confers upon the master, confers upon God, some rather ungodlike traits, doesn't it? Are we to understand that when the slave describes his master as a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed, are we to understand there and then that he is describing God here and now. And instead of quickly running to say no, that God is not like that, that God is not a harsh God, what if for a moment we said the answer was yes? What would it mean if we understood God as someone who had not just expectations, but lofty expectations of each of us. The entire line of the prophets were called to preach to God's people precisely because they were not meeting God's expectations. Would it really be so horrible to have a multifaceted God to understand God's nature not just as someone who is kind and gracious, but who also has standards and expectations, not just for our behavior, but for our actions in the world. So if we take this parable, not as one that describes our attributes, what then is it asking us to consider? And I, for one, think that because the master is so proud of these slaves and so judgmental of the third for their investing acumen, that the parable today is not about our attributes. It's about our attitude. Uh, if you've ever gone through retirement or investment planning, uh, one of the first things you do when you meet with your financial advisor is what? You take a small test to find out your risk tolerance. Uh, you know, there was a, a, one, a, a whole host of financial experts who in the crash of 2008, uh, after the stock market had lost, I think 60% of its value, uh, who said, this is the perfect time to invest, right? Stocks are depressed, get in now. Yeah, I would have loved to, but I lost my 60% on the way in. Um, and I will admit that when it comes to my own financial planning, I am on the more conservative side. I don't like losing things. I like that there is some security in knowing that the money I put away is going to be there. But one of the things about risk when it comes to investment 
is that safety and uh, potential are almost always mutually exclusive. That if I wanted to, in a few years, if someone had given me a sum of money to invest, for me to double that would absolutely require a risk-taking beyond what I am comfortable with. But that, I think, is precisely the point of the gospel this morning. If it isn't about the attributes of our personality that we are blessed with, which are unequal, some of us are given more uh, gifts than others. Some of us have the same number of gifts, but it, we have different uh, quality as opposed to quantity. But for me to double the investment would take an, an extraordinary amount of comfort with risk taking which I will admit I do not have. But I think the point of the parable this morning is to recognize and to encourage disciples of Christ to be bold and to take risks. And I want you to think about how this church has operated over the last say, eight years. There have been seasons of great risk-taking, and there have been seasons of more kind of conservative leadership. Strangely, I have been the vicar for all eight of those years, right? And it makes me wonder just a little bit about my own attitude towards not just this parish, but the kingdom of God. That as we navigate how to provide services in a pandemic, as we navigate uh, an upcoming stewardship drive, uh, as we navigate just a, together as a gathered people worshiping in a tradition uh, handed down to us through the centuries, that our default position shouldn't be one of a little bit more risk. That occasionally it is okay to accept and admit that scripture is indicting us, or at the very least indicting me personally. That scripture intends us to be a little bit more bold a little bit more uh, okay with risk because what we are doing is we are risking for the kingdom of God. If we understand this parable to be about attitude, what God will judge is timidity. What God will judge is cautiousness. What God will reward is letting our light shine confidently and unafraid of its consequences. Our gospel lesson this morning is a reminder to take risks and to let our light shine. It reminds me of the very famous words of the poet Mary Ann Williamson, and I've, I've uh, recited this poem from the pulpit a number of times, and I hope uh, for those of you who have heard it before, you'll grant me an indulgence to read it one more time. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant gorgeous, talented, and fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, 
it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. When Marianne Williamson says, it is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. It inclines me to reject an understanding of this parable as being about attributes, about being about talents as a skill or a personality. An understanding that, it is, that the glory of God is in all of us helps me to understand that this is not about attributes, but about attitude. That we can, even with small ginger steps, learn to be a little bit more at ease with the light that God has given us to shine, a little bit less cautious in how the world might greet the good news we bear for the world, a little bit more risky, a little bit more bold, a little bit more courageous to let others know that the light that we see in God's creation, the light which gives meaning to our lives matters. And that others should join with us in this endeavor because as we let our own uh, light shine, we unconsciously and perhaps consciously give other people permission to do the same. But whether or not we understand this parable as being about attributes or attitude, one thing is absolutely clear. Stasis and the status quo are not to be rewarded. We cannot simply bury our treasures, our talents, ourselves in the ground, thinking that that will do anything to create and spur growth. What God demands of us in this parable is that we are out in the marketplace, trading, freewheeling, doing everything we can to increase the gifts that God has given us to make better this world and to approach the kingdom of God here on earth. So now let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him and through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. So, Joe, as you uh, read the prayers of the people, could I ask you to maybe lean a little bit uh, closer? We, we had some reports that it was hard to hear you during the reading. So I think the closer you are, um, the, the better we might be able to hear you. You bet. In the parish cycle of prayer, we remember Alan and Linda DeWolf. In the deanery cycle of prayer, we remember St. Nicholas, Tahoe City. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember St. John, Marysville. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we remember the church of St. Paul. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our prayer friends and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for all justice and freedom and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. <laughs> for all who are in danger, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and the truth. For our presiding bishop and Megan, our bishop, for Matt, our vicar, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For our community and for all those treating our COVID patients. Hear us, Lord. Your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For gentle rain. We will exalt you, O oh God, our King, and praise, praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. O God, Heavenly Father, who by thy Son Jesus Christ has promised to all those who seek your kingdom and its righteousness all things necessary to sustain their life. Send us, we entreat you, in this time of need, such moderate rain and showers that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to your honor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, and now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Uh, and now is a, a new invitation to the peace. Uh, if I could ask you to unmute yourselves uh, and share the peace with one another, the peace of the Lord be always with you. 
And also, and also with, you. With, you. with you. Hello, everybody. Peace. Peace there, SC. Peace, Charles, <laughs> Chuck, Christy. Heather, and Joe, David, and Paula, Michael, Michael, Abby. Sorry, the video's been off. John, we didn't peace. Know it. <laughs> and I don't, I don't see uh, Hello. I don't see uh, El Jefe and uh, Margaret, but peace to them as well. Yeah, I know we've got uh, the DeWolfs and the Mulders, among others, uh, joining us online. So it's uh, it's wonderful to see you all. Uh, this actually is a little bit more uh, interactive, I guess, as, as best we can replicate. Uh, I think what we'll do is if you'll hang on at the conclusion of our church service, uh, it would be worth kind of hearing some feedback to see if, if this is a preferred uh, delivery method uh, as opposed to the more kind of just uh, passive uh, video watching on uh, YouTube or Facebook. So if you could stick around for a few moments after church, I'd love to hear some feedback. Um, the last announcement that I forgot to make earlier is uh, the church will be open on Fridays uh, from 10 to noon um, so that I, the parishioners can pick up uh, a PIX. Uh, so this is a PIX. It's spelled P-Y-X. Uh, and you'll notice, I think I've shown this before, uh, but it bears the same Jerusalem cross uh, as our altar. So it's a, it's a nice uh, tie-in uh, to our common table here at the church. Uh, but what we can do is we can fill these picks uh, with either a week or a month's supply of communion wafers uh, so that when it comes to joining us in worship, uh, you can uh, open up the picks uh, and take out a wafer uh, and participate uh, in the sacrament uh, synchronously. Uh, so the church will be open uh, Fridays from 10 to noon. Uh, if that time doesn't work with you, of course, uh, send me an email and we can uh, come up with a, a, a personal appointment to uh, either pick up or deliver the pixes as well. I'm more than happy to drive these to parishioners' homes. Uh, so as we are likely to continue to worship uh, digitally, uh, the PIX is a, a wonderful way for us to participate in the sacraments uh, from a distance. So I, I hope you'll uh, avail yourselves of that opportunity. I think, let me just make sure. So uh, our, I misplaced my paper. Uh, our operatory hymn this morning is uh, For the Beauty of the Earth, I believe. So uh, Christy, if you'll play that. Uh, while I set the table.
The Lord be with you. You know, I think for this, if you guys would like to unmute, that might be an okay thing. There we go. It's hard to be celebrant and people playing both parts. So uh, our, our Eucharistic service continues this morning with Eucharistic Prayer B, which can be found in your bulletin or on page 367 in the Book of Common. The Lord be with you. And also lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God our God. heaven and earth, our we give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his ministry. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now uh, let us together uh, say the prayer of spiritual communion. <clears throat> In union, O Lord, with all the faithful at every altar of thy church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, celebrated, we desire to offer thee the 
We present the feet of our soul and body with the earnest that we can always unite in all And since we cannot now receive the sacramental, we beseech thee to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves to thee and embrace thee all affection and love. Let nothing ever separate thee from us. May we live in the love. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, Father Lord, 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 in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on, earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us the this day our day daily bread. And forgive us our, give us our sins. As we, As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for each of you, the children of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Take some effort. It would take some extra effort to go there and get those. On the other, on the other hand, we could tell them we're going to be in town tomorrow and have them give us some. Uh, and now, as has been our custom uh, for uh, the past uh, month or two, uh, let us pray using the alternate post-communion prayer uh, found in your bulletin or on page 366 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for giving, for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Uh, and our closing hymn, I think I've moved again. Yeah, I know. You want to flip over or you want to be in the conversation? Uh, uh, Chrissy, would you play our closing hymn? I'm actually, I can't put in my paper that says what, what hymn it is. We plow the fields and scatter. Wonderful. Mm -hmm.
Hello. You're in church? Well, I was, yeah. <laughs> We have come into worship. Let us go forth into world, go forth into the world to serve in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 